Um, did you see the uh, the kind of paparazzi quick little interview thing that TMZ got with uh, Harry O, where they kind of asked him his thoughts on Suge's allegations on his podcast about the sale of Death Row not really being legit in his response? We'll play it for people that didn't see it, but I wanted to get your take on, on what he said. Michael, how are you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Hey. I want to know, as the founder of Death Row Records, I, I want to know, okay, so Suge Knight, you know, casts some doubt about Snoop Dogg buying Death Row and saying he's skeptical if, you know, the transaction was legal. I mean, I want to know from you, like, can you kind of set the record straight on that? Yeah, it's as legal as you can get. Yeah, trust me, Death Row is real. Snoop Dogg's uh, purchase of Death Row is a legitimate transaction. And, and like, I just don't really like to discuss shit at night. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, what is he talking about and why? You know what I mean? And so Death Row is a full functional business, and we're in business to do business. I find it interesting that he's doing the tap dance like he the, was the co-founder or a co-owner of Death Row. If anything, if anything, all he was was a, I call him a, a, a middleman that, that you know, gave vouch for somebody to give some money to Suge and now for whatever they were doing at the time. But it ain't like he had any decisions or creative control or deal with any of the ar- artists. And so how would you consider yourself a, uh, a co-founder of something when all you did was invested some money. So we giving stockbrokers credit for being founders in the company now. That's what I found funny about it. But, hey, all I ever seen him doing, and he do acquiesce a lot of it to Snoop, so I give him respect for that. But all he ever been talking about doing with the brand that I seen was selling weed. <laughs> Was trying to market the stuff with, with weed and stuff like that with dispensaries and branding it with weed because that's all he knows. Now, the movies part and all of that that he's saying that Death Row is supposed to be in, I hope they do do it. Hope they do do it. But they done had this for three years. Two years, okay. Two years. Super Bowl. Time it to be two years that we've been talking about Snoop having control of Death Row, right? What have we got from him? A uh, a sound alike, a Marvin Gaye sound alike, <laughs> and a whole bunch of people walking around with fake Death Row chains. Now Snoop doing a hell of a job with marketing the merchandise, the T-shirts and stuff like that. But that's money that's been sitting waiting since the 90s. That shit just left on the table. Out of being, for lack of a better word, just overwhelmed with making money other ways where he didn't care. But that, that's all that Snoop did. Everybody been knowing that there were t-shirts and merchandise and branding to be made off of Death Row and that symbol and that logo. So... Until they do something with the label, make something happen with it, then we'll talk more about it. He's talking about TV series and all of that. The only thing he can tell us about the TV series and stuff like that was time in prison. You know, we can go watch our eyes if we want to learn his story, if we want to see what he can talk about. So it'll be interesting to see what input he's going to have. He needed to stop bolstering. I know him and Snoop Dogg arguing. The relationship is not like they're trying to portray it or he's trying to portray it. And I don't even see Snoop talking about him. But trust me, y'all. All they own is that fucking symbol. And then they change that and put a dog in, in the chair. <laughs> That's all they own, y'all. It's the name. He got a job. He's allowed to run it. Chris Taylor and his hedge fund owns Death Row Records. Look it up, y'all. 
Chris Taylor, not Snoop Dogg. I'm trying to tell y'all stuff, but I know you cheerleaders, you male groupie cheerleaders, gonna be jumping up and down like you know when you don't know. <laughs>